Jay, wonderful to have you here, and thank you so much for sponsoring this event. Um, the E2D Hawkeye, uh, it completed its IoT and E last year, I understand. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us uh, anything about how the aircraft was able to really demonstrate uh, what it's capable of uh, and what's left to be done uh, to ensure it meets uh, IOC in 2015? Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Uh, the, uh, the aircraft was put through a tremendous test regime, both in the developmental test phase and then shifting into an operational test phase, and was determined to be operationally effective and suitable, which was uh, a testament to the amount of preparation that went into developing and fielding the Advanced Hawkeye. Fantastic. Now, the last time Defense IQ caught up with the E2D program, uh, there was mention that maintenance and training had been one of the priorities for the past year. Um, how effective has this element been managed, uh, do you feel, and what feedback uh, have you received from the crews training to take this aircraft into their own hands? Great. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we, we are fielding a, a new capability that is a two-generation leap uh, in radar detection and tracking technology. But uh, as robust as those requirements were, the government had also given us requirements for very strenuous reliability and maintainability. So from the subsystem level all the way up to the, the complete weapon system, the E2D Advanced Hawkeye, we had to build in that reliability and maintainability to have higher aircraft availability rates than we saw with the E2C. One evidence of that is the fact that the Navy is going to operate five E2Ds per squadron as opposed to four E2Cs per squadron, but they're not increasing their manning uh, of the, the maintenance element of the wing. So the same maintenance complement is gonna be able to maintain five E2Ds where those uh, resources were required to su support four E2Cs. So a much more uh, reliable and maintainable aircraft. Very good. Now, integration, that appears from my perspective to be the sort of end game, whether it's data integration uh, or indeed the effective integration of, of commercial providers and your own customers. In either case, how has Northrop Grumman uh, found its feet in actually managing uh, a joint capability to this scale? Um, and what does this mean for the potential for, for new partnerships? Well, we have uh, a tremendous Hawkeye industry team and uh, the, the Navy not only started with a, a very robust radar industry team led, uh, of course, by Northrop Grumman as the, as the prime system integrator, but also Lockheed Martin, our radar uh, lead radar integrator, and then their suppliers. And this has been uh, a testament to this program is our ability to manage a very diverse uh, global supply chain network of, of industry partners, and then working across the type model series platforms to develop those interoperabilities with other aircraft. Uh, that's the key tenement uh, uh, tenant, I should say, of Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter Air, which the E2D is an element of. We're of course uh, honoured to have you back uh, to the forum this year, um, and in the past we've seen a, a separation between the AEW domain and the Airborne ISR domain, and we're now bringing those together. Um, what can you tell us, uh, do you believe, from uh, your, your point of view, uh, this sort of expansion of the community really offers? Um, in terms of what you're able to deliver on at your presentation uh, and also what you're able to uh, deliver from uh, the perspective of uh, meeting uh, such an international community? Well, I, I think it's fantastic. I think uh, through the, the partnership uh, of Northrop Grumman as, the, as a prime sponsor for these uh, types of conferences uh, and working very closely with our other Northrop Grumman organizations, uh, uh, the ISR and AEW and C, um, uh, mission areas are very much overlapped. I mean, uh, ISR, uh, a very robust set of sensors and capabilities that then get layered into advanced early warning and control for our mission area, uh, and then all the way down through battle management uh, threads. So there's a, there's a logical tie. We, we are an element of the ISR domain, the big S, maybe a little I and little R, but certainly a large element of the surveillance portion of ISR uh, and then we uh, leverage all of the organic capabilities for doing command and control in a very automated fashion, by the way. A fairly efficient crew size uh, that's able to handle a very robust uh, threat spectrum, both in quantity and in stressing size and, and uh, 
technique uh, of the adversary. So the E2D brings together both the ISR and the AEW. So it's logical that we're here at this conference presenting both AEW as well as some of our unmanned ISR capabilities and how they uh, are going to be able to provide the joint warfighter this uh, capability through uh, integration of those and, and the netting of those systems. And with this expanded community, has anything struck you about the questions being asked or the, the focuses uh, that you're finding from uh, those in attendance? Well, we're, we, I think we have very high customer intimacy in terms of what the customer's requirements are, but we come to these conferences to listen to what our customer's needs are. We also come to, uh, to uh, as I've said before at these conferences, kind of exchange in a very respectful way ideas with our, with our competitors who have uh, competing systems in the international market. Um, and then finally, to, to I hope, once uh, our customers make those award decisions on which systems they're going to purchase, our ability to be able to integrate our systems, these competing systems, uh, for the benefit of Warfighter. Uh, they, they can't afford to have the competition that we saw to the left of the contract award extend beyond to the right of after they've procured systems. We need to to net uh, our friendly forces to provide asymmetrical advantage over, over the, our adversaries. And we'll do that through forums like this that allow us to get together and, and discuss those things, uh, albeit in a conference environment, but certainly hopefully beyond that in government to government and industry to industry discussions. And if I were to ask you and put you on the spot and ask you to uh, summarize your impressions of the event this year in a sentence, how would you perhaps uh, describe it? Uh, highly collaborative, uh, very, uh, uh, as, as our chairman, uh, Matt Roper, has said, he's, he's asked everybody to challenge the speakers and challenge each other. Uh, only then will we really get the most out of uh, the expense that we uh, all take on to be at these kind of conferences. So very successful in my opinion. I want to thank IQPC for that. Thank you. Thank you.